Alright, let's try it. We're live. We're live. Hello, hello, hello. We are going live, at least I think. Let's see what we got going on here. We are going to talk about China banning cryptocurrency again. China has declared all cryptocurrency transactions are illegal um, in an intensified crackdown. Now, <laughs> you may be wondering, didn't China already make cryptocurrencies illegal? And if that's the question you're asking, then yes, you are absolutely right. As a matter of fact, I believe China has now banned Bitcoin has banned cryptocurrencies uh, eight or nine times, at least at this point. Now, one thing that I would take away from this right off the bat is if they have to keep banning it, does that mean they're not able to ban it? Because that's what I would think. Because if they've already banned it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times and people are still using it, then obviously those bans are not working. But of course, doesn't mean they will stop trying. Like any good government policy, when it doesn't work, let's just double down and do more of it, right? And that's exactly what China's doing. So they've intensified their crackdown on cryptocurrencies. On Friday, they declared all financial transactions, including cryptocurrencies, illegal. There was a nationwide ban on cryptocurrencies. Now, while this might not be so surprising to you, the reason why might be. As a matter of fact, I'm going to introduce a new concept to you, something that you've probably never heard of would be my guess, because I've been studying finance for uh, over a dozen years, and I wasn't really aware of this either very much. And it's called the Mundell Fleming Trilemma. Does that make sense? Well, probably not, because you probably never heard of it. Now, the trilemma is something sort of like a dilemma, but instead of two, there's three. And so what that means is that there's three different policies that a government, a central bank would try to maintain. The problem is you can't have all three at the same time, sort of like a dilemma. So a dilemma is like you have to choose between one or the other. And a trilemma is uh, similar, where you have three different things that you want but you can only get two. And that is the problem that China and the central bank has found themselves in, which is the same problem that the United States Federal Reserve Central Bank and all the central banks around the world are finding themselves in. And this is exactly where China's at and their back is against the wall. So I'm gonna take you and let's go ahead and look at some things here on the screen. So we're talking about this Mundell Fleming trilemma. And I'm gonna explain why China, as you can see on the screen, bans cryptocurrency transactions in this sweeping transaction. Uh, crackdown. Now, just real quick, if you're just new, of course, my name is Mark Moss. Thanks for watching my channel. Um, this is not my normal background, in case you're wondering. And that's because over here in Puerto Rico, we don't have power. As a matter of fact, over 800,000 residents on the island of Puerto Rico are without power. Unfortunately, I found myself in that situation as well. And I had to leave where I'm at, leave by the beach, and I had to head over to the city where the city has generators. And so I'm renting this little office um, so I can have electricity and so I can bring content to you. Now, I'm not talking about electricity today, but just as a side note, uh, I've talked about this several times before. Look, we've known how to make electricity for a long time. As a matter of fact, we've had electricity for well over 100 years. It is not very difficult to make electricity. You can do it in little generators. You can do it, of course, in giant power plants. The only reason, the only reason, let me go back to a big screen so I can tell you this. The only reason why anybody should ever be out of power or is ever out of power today in 2021 is because of poor policies. That's it. We know how to make electricity. We have poor policies. What's happened is instead of having private companies that know how to make electricity, that make it for a profit, run it, instead we put politicians in place. What do they know about electricity? They know nothing, which is exactly why we have these problems. So anyway, that's why I'm shooting from this undisclosed location right now, uh, just so you know. But let's go ahead and just jump back over into this uh, real quickly. Let's just see what's going on. All right, we got some people viewing. Oh, and we got some comments. All right, look at that. I haven't been, I haven't done a live in a really long time. So uh, shoot, I should do this more often. Does anybody think I should go live more often? Let me know in the comments down below if you think I should be going live more often because it's been a long time. And you know what? I actually kind of like being live with you. Let's see what we got here. Jay Stroud, what's up? What's up? G Graham, China banning all crypto except for theirs. No, no, I'm going to talk to you about that. We're going to talk about that. Let's see what else we got. Uh, China did this so many times. Yep, yep, yep. China bans many things. Yeah. As a matter of fact, China's banned Facebook. They've made their own copy. They banned Amazon. They have their own copy. They banned Google. They have their own copy. Um, and I guess they're banning Bitcoin and they're going to have their own copy as well, which is their China central bank digital currency. 
What do we got? Mary Brown, legal versus lawful. That's right. That's right. Arizona Dave. What's up, man? All right. We got lots of people. I love seeing you guys. I should be going live more often. Leave me a comment and tell me. Otherwise, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just be recording these videos. Karen Rivera says, live is good. There we go. Gus Spencer, like a boss. That's right. Mark Moss, the boss. You got it. All right. So let me tell you what I'm talking about here. China, I'm going to go back to sharing my screen here, and then we'll jump over into the... Um, Jump back over to the live screen. There we go. You can see the health of the chat. So here we go. China bans cryptocurrencies transactions in a sweeping crackdown. Of course, here we go. China's central bank bans cryptocurrencies transactions to avoid risks. What risks are they talking about? Well, the risk to their financial system, or is it the risk to their grip, to the monopoly? on the financial system. And I think that's what it is. But let me show you what I'm talking about. So I want to introduce you to a concept. Again, you probably never heard of this. It's called the M the Mundell Fleming trilemma. Three things. You can't have all three things of these. And I actually did a tweet thread. If you're following me on Twitter, you've probably already read this. And if so, I apologize. And if you're not following me on Twitter, <laughs> then what are you even doing? Uh, why don't you just take a second right now, open up another window, go to Twitter, the number one Mark Moss, and just Click follow real quick over there while you're at it. All right, so here's where we're at, right? China is stuck on this Mundo Fleming trilemma. So what are they doing? They're banning Bitcoin. They're banning cryptocurrencies again because they can't have these three things at the same time. So one, a nation can keep only two of three economic policies at the same time. One, a managed fixed currency. So that's their currency. That's their fiat currency. Um, they can only have that or... They can manage, or we should say manipulate, the interest rates. So how much of the monetary supply they have or what the interest rate on the debt is or free-flowing capital with other nations with trade. So those are the three policies, and they can't have all three at the same time. You can see it here in this chart right here. They have to pick only two of three. And so what happens is the nations must choose, choose between the two. They can't have quote unquote, the good stuff that evens out your economy, right? So this is, again, having the currency and the, and the interest rates and still have free flowing capital in and out of the country at the same time. They can't have that. The reason why is because the policies get to be at odds with each other. And so what does that mean? When currency valuations or interest rates start getting out of whack, then what's going to happen? Either capital will flow into the country Right? If capital, if, if interest rates are really high, the capital is going to flow in. Or, and if, if so, then it overwhelms the system. It overwhelms the financial system. Or it flows out of the economy to where it can be treated best. That's what my, my investing philosophy is. Money goes where it's treated best. So it flows out of the economy, and then it sends the economy into a death spiral. Right? Now, we can see examples of this all throughout history. As I said here, in Asia in the 1990s was a very good example of that. Um, but, of course, the Chinese well, and all the central banks, they want it all. They don't want to be stuck between these two choices. So they want it all. But the problem is, per the trilemma, they can't. They can't have it. And so they're forced to choose. They can manage their currency. They can manage interest rates. Or they can have this free-flowing capital. But the thing is, is that people like you and me, people that have to manage our money, we have real-world consequences, real-world decisions, business owners, etc. We're always going to try to maximize, or at least you should be, trying to maximize the amount of wealth. And so let's say that um, your currency that you're in, whether that's the US dollar, the Chinese yuan, Venezuela dollar, whatever it is, if it's losing value too fast, what are you going to do? You're going to get out of it, right? Why would you want to hold a currency that's crashing? You wouldn't. And so you're going to try to exchange that currency unit that's falling very, very, very rapidly. And you're going to try to exchange it for something else that's not. Of course, right? Why wouldn't you do that? The problem is, as you do that, um, as, as investors are fleeing out, it makes it very difficult for the country to bring new investment capital in. Why would they do that, right? They're hesitant to put money into China when it's losing value. They don't want to do that because they don't know if they're going to be able to get it back out, which when, the, when it's in a death spiral, the chances are they won't. And this is exactly why China is cracking down on all cryptocurrencies, like the final, the final time, supposedly. I guess six, seven, eight, nine times weren't enough. This is going to be the final time. And they have to crack down it because they cannot allow anybody to get their money out of China. Now, um, I've done a few videos. You've probably seen the news about Evergrande in China. Uh, there's a massive problem with the financial system in China. It's literally like melting down uh, right now all around us. 
And Evergon is a big, big, it's one of the largest uh, home builders in the nation. Um, but they've moved beyond just home builders. And so now they're in financial products like pensions. Um, they're in like health services. They're into electric vehicles. And they're crashing. It's causing the rest of the economy to crash. And so there's problems all around. And so people want to flee to safety. But China doesn't want them to do that. Per the trilemma, they're trying to protect that capital flow. And so central bank digital currencies, Bitcoin, et cetera, give them an easy way to do that. Now, uh, jumping back over to this, we can see here there's another reason. Number six right here, you can see it's also, let's see if I can open this up. It's also not a coincidence that China is doing this at the exact same time they're rolling out their own central bank digital currency. Hmm, imagine that. So we've talked about this many times. China has been the first country to roll out a central bank digital currency. And it's kind of like this uh, evil James Bond villain type of way where it's like, ooh, I have a plan. Let's bring the whole world to China for the Olympics in 2022. And while the whole world is here, we'll force them to use our central bank digital currency, which they call the ECNY. Um, what a, what a plan, right? Bring the whole world there for the Olympics, force them to use your currency, and of course, crush cryptocurrency. Do not allow the people, any outlet, force them to stay inside the system, which of course they did. And of course, the PBOC, the People's Bank of China, which of course the CCP, the Communist Chinese Party, um, they want to tell you that it's kind of like Bitcoin, right? It's kind of the same thing, central bank digital currency, kind of like Bitcoin, um, but without all the risks. Because, you know, of course, uh, bad people will use Bitcoin for bad things, but um, good people will use the central bank digital currency. <laughs> and why? Because it's completely controlled. You can't do anything with it, right? They're going to see everything you can. You're not going to be able to move it um, out of the country. You're not going to be able to buy products with it, et cetera. And so um, as I ask here in number seven, now that you understand this Mundell Fleming trilemma, ask yourself, it's in China now, but could this be coming to a country near you? Could it be coming to your own country? Because, shoot, I mean, the U.S. government is facing the exact same problem, aren't they? Right? They want to control the money, the money supply. But they've printed $8 trillion in the last 18 months. They brought interest rates down to zero, so they got no room left there. So they're controlling the money supply, they're controlling interest rates. The third piece is free-flowing capital. What happens when people realize that, well, shoot, uh, my money's deflating or inflating away, it's losing value. It's paying me no interest. So I'm not going to hold these dollars. I'm going to put it into something else. Well, they're going to do the same thing, right? They're going to try to control the capital. They don't want that to leave the system. I asked the question, if the US government faces the same problem, if a large number of people move to crypto, then the problem is that the central banks lose their power. They lose the power over monetary policy. But if you follow this channel, then you know that I talk about Bitcoin all the time. And that is exactly our point. That's the exact point we're trying to say. Separate money and state. That's the whole point. The, the power of the purse needs to be taken away from the government. My favorite economist, Hayek, says that there shall never be a sound money again until the thing is taken from the hands of the government. But it can't be done by, by, by force, but rather only by some sly roundabout way. A sly roundabout way introduced until it's so big that the government can't do anything about it. And that's exactly where we find Bitcoin today. Now, of course, they may try to do things. And as I see here, um, point number nine, they're already, we're already seeing this, right? I've talked about this in this last infrastructure bill. They put all this language in to really restrict crypto, to cryptocurrencies. They want to make it very difficult, almost impossible to transact. As a matter of fact, they put um, bills in place or regulations in place that are actually impossible. Like you can't even do the things that they're requiring. And of course, if you can't do the things that they're requiring, then yeah, you're guilty. Um, and so we're already starting to see that. We're seeing overbearing tax policies now coming into place. And so what that does is it makes crypto more difficult to use. It makes it less appealing. Like I said, the people that are making it, they can't even comply with this stuff. And so uh, they're trying to dissuade. I don't know if that's a word. Dissuade people from using it. Yeah, I guess that's a word. Um, but what I'm seeing is that it actually has the opposite effect. And here's why. I'm going to go back to full screen for a minute. Here's why. Well, when, if the government tells you that you shouldn't do drugs, for example, that doesn't make you want to do drugs. Like, you know drugs are bad for you. You're not going to do them, right? But what if the government tells you, 
you don't have the right to hold your wealth in a way that we can't steal from you. You don't have the right to hold your wealth in a way that we can't inflate away and we can't seize whenever we feel like it. Well, <laughs> that makes me want to do that, right? So their policies are forcing people to do this, all right? Now, um, that's why whenever you see in the United States, they talk about banning guns. Guess what happens with gun sales? They go through the roof, all right? Um, let's see what we got. Oh, we got more people jumping in. I'm going to jump into the chat real quick. Preach it, Mark. Ah, oh, I'd love to see it. That's right. You know I'm going to preach it. What else we got here? Man, the chat, they're coming in so fast I can't even read them. Slow it down. Slow it down. All right. I'm going to tell you what all this means, what I think is going to happen. But before I do, I want to say one thing. If you're following this channel, you know that the governments are just going to continue to squeeze us harder and harder and harder. We have this great reset agenda we're facing. They say by 2030 that we'll own nothing and be happy. But I've told you that I'm not going to be happy with that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make sure that never happens, at least if there's anything I can do about it. And as a matter of fact, I want to make sure that you're on the same page. So I'm actually going to have a live event. My first ever live event where I'm trying to pull people just like you and just like me together. I'm going to bring in 15 of my friends that are the best speakers in the world on this specific topic, how to navigate the Great Reset. The countries are coming for everything you have. They're going to start with your money. And if you want to know how to keep your assets in a way that they don't end up owning them all and you own nothing, then you want to come to my live event. There's going to be a link I'm going to put in the description down below. Make sure you come. You got to meet people, right? Iron sharpens iron. Get those strategies. All right. Now, enough of that uh, pitch. Let's jump back into what I think is going to happen. So what I see happening is as the governments continue to try to discourage people, that's a better word than dissuade, uh, discourage people from using these, they're only forcing the use case even that much more. Now, what I think happens is this leads nation states to try to shut down cryptocurrency as best as they can. Now, we've seen the new head of the SEC, Gary Gensler, he's coming out kind of full guns blazing. And he is saying that they are coming for stable coins and they are coming for cryptocurrencies because they are securities. Because they're securities. They weren't registered. They weren't licensed. They're illegal securities. And even bigger than that, the problem is they can shut them down. They have a person, a figurehead, Vitalik Buterin or um, Charles Hoskins or somebody they can squeeze um, or the servers, the nodes, they're not decentralized. They're run on Amazon web servers. They can be shut off like we saw with uh, Parler after the election. And so um, as long as there's these centralized choke points, we're going to see problems with that. And so make sure that, uh, you know, wherever you put your money, it's rock solid. And so Bitcoin is different, right? Bitcoin is different than any other network. And that's why it's not facing any of these issues, right? We know the government can't shut it down and the government knows they can't shut it down, which is exactly why you don't hear Gary Gensler talking about Bitcoin at all. Now you hear him talking about all the other ones. Your favorite uh, XRP Ripple is under some serious fire of the SEC, but not Bitcoin. Now, as I make the case, um, like I said, these, these ones with choke points are going to have problems and what you store your wealth in will matter. It's going to matter as the government's become more restrictive. And so, um, like I said, their goal is 2030. You'll have nothing to be happy. I ain't happy with that. I'm going to hold my assets and my wealth in a way that they can't do that. And hopefully you are too. All right, let's see what we got in the chat roll. I'm going to answer some questions if I can. Uh, yeah, hit the like button. Yeah, come on. What are you guys doing if you're not hitting the white like button? I saw someone said that in the chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, of course. Like it, share it, leave a comment. Let's see what we got down here. Is there a way for me to slow this down? I love the live. Yeah, a little bit more energy. It's actually kind of fun seeing all these messages go across my screen so fast. It gives me energy too. Matt Stone, what do we got? Jim D, Percy Williamson. I'm renting with a $285,000 loan approved. Prices are too high. Are they? Prices are too high compared to what, I would ask? Prices are too high compared to what? Compared to where they were or compared to where they're going or compared to what? When you're measuring prices in US dollars, well, let's see. They just pumped in $8 trillion in the last year. So what does that do to the signal? They're distorted. So if I, if I, if I looked at prices, are home prices expensive in dollars? Yeah, never been higher in US dollars. Are they expensive in gold? No, actually, they're half the price in gold. Are they expensive in oil? Oh, they're actually half the price in oil too. What about if I measured them in rice? Oh, they're cheap in rice too. So when you're measuring only in dollars, you're seeing bad data, bad signal. 
Uh, e. Jacobs, great interview with Gerald recently. You going to get George Gammon on? Of course, I'm going to get George. George is one of my one of my really good buddies. He's been on my show several times. I've been on his, um, and he is going to be speaking at my live event with Gerald. So Gerald and George and myself all in the same room. Come hang out with us. As a matter of fact, we're going to have just for my insiders like you. You're getting the special inf inside information right now. Just like you, we're going to have a special dinner where you can hang out with me and George and Gerald at the same time going to put a link in the description down below. Don't miss that. Um, yeah, there we go. It's in the chat roll right there. Marketdisruptorslive.com. I should have just said it. What am I thinking? Marketdisruptorslive.com. Myself, George Gammon, Gerald Salente, we're all going to be there. Uh, let's see what else we got. Lycan. No, hit it. Yep. PL Hunt. Shout out from Melbourne. Tom Kane from Melbourne. Man, I'm so sorry for you guys. I feel bad. I have uh, seen what is going on down there, and it breaks my heart, to be honest with you. But don't worry. We got your back because we are going to stand up for the rest of the world. What I believe breaks the trend of totalitarianism, this grip of authoritarianism that, unfortunately, you guys in Melbourne are getting the brunt end of right now, is competition. When the rest of the world sees how free countries and free economies can outperform them, they will be forced to change. It happened to China. China was the most communist country in the whole world and they were being left behind. They were forced to open up and open up their economies in order to compete. And don't worry, we got you down there. All right, what else we got? Dennis says, I knew it was coming. What was coming? The Great Reset? Yeah, it is coming. Uh, how to purchase Bitcoin. Easy. Go to swanbitcoin.com. Go to river.com. Go to coinbase.com. Or go to Google and say how to, how to buy Bitcoin and just buy it and just hold it. That's all you got to do. Gold is Twinkie snack for Bitcoin. Uh, we got Renato, Sunshine Coast Aussie. How's it going over there? Uh, you should get Michael Saylor. Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Um, Bitcoin is the revolution, that's right, that's right. Uh, David Smith, Mark, what do you think of the future of Hedera Hashgraph? Um, you know, I try not to um, talk about other cryptocurrencies. What I would just recommend for you to do is, one, understand what the problems are in the world today. In my opinion, what are the problems? The problems are that we have an unlimited money supply pumping $8 trillion into the economy in the last year alone, which has distorted every single price signal that we have. That's a big problem. Not only that, it's what gives the state the power to wage war across the world and on their own citizens. Without a money printer, they wouldn't be able to do this. That's the source of their power. So that's a big problem. Immutable uh, Laws that are constantly changing all the time. I don't know what the laws are going to be tomorrow. That's a big problem. Um, and so those are the problems. I need solutions to those. So I need something that has a fixed monetary supply. I need something that's censorship resistant. I need something that has immutable law, not governance, not something with decentralized governance, but immutable law. And so when you understand the problems, understand the solutions that we need, then I would just ask yourself, out of the 8,000, 10,000, 12,000 coins out there, how many of them solve those problems? And Hedera is not one of those. Um, crypto is going up. We going up. Um, Nick Nolte, I'd rather buy $43,000 in gold than one Bitcoin. Nick, and that's great. Nick Nolte, um, that's great. You would rather buy um, gold than Bitcoin, and that is not a problem. So what I believe is that we need to understand what I call our investor DNA. And what that means is that we're all different, right? We're all different. And you need to be investing along with your, obviously, your gut intuition, but also what your interests are. And so some people want to use gold, and that's okay. So at my great Surviving the Great Reset event, I am going to have some of the top gold speakers in the world. They're talking about gold. And of course, we'll have people talking about Bitcoin. And there's information for you no matter which side of you're on. And that's okay. Um, Ian Jolly says, I seen you on ESPN riding dirt bikes in Mexico. That's right. I do have a TV show on ESPN riding dirt bikes in Mexico. It's cool you saw me. Uh, great to meet you shooting at Bitbuck Bloom. Yeah, that was such a good time, wasn't it? Great to meet you, Leo. Um, OG Foundation, why not Bitcoin Cash Mark? Same fixed supply yet scaling. The problem is because what they did is they went with big blocks. Um, they went with big blocks so they could have a faster base layer. But the problem is, remember the trilemma? <laughs> what they sacrificed in, in decentralization or censorship persistent, they gained in speed. But see, I don't think speed was the problem, right? The world wasn't asking for faster money. Because, shoot, I mean, Venmo works pretty good. The world, uh, faster money doesn't fix the world. So they got faster base layer. That's cool. But they gave up censorship resistant, which, is, in my opinion, was the most important thing. Now, Bitcoin picked up speed on, on layer two. So using Lightning on Bitcoin, I can transact Bitcoin faster and cheaper than any other coin. And we have the security. 
Um, Gus Spencer, when will we see a bear market for crypto and will it be, um, I don't know, man, uh, Gus Spencer, you know, a lot of it depends on what happens with the stock market and the Fed, if they let the markets crash, um, you know, based off of uh, four year halving cycles, maybe um, early next year. Um, well, my thoughts on silver, silver, silver and gold, in my opinion, are great long term bets, but be prepared for a bumpy, slow road. Um, Virginia Barber, what if you don't understand how to use or buy? Well, Virginia, what I would say is learn. <laughs> Uh, seriously, I mean, spend a little bit of time and maybe, maybe, maybe put five bucks in, put a little bit, just put five bucks in something you're not afraid to lose. Um, and just start with that, put a little skin in the game. And then what happens is then it will, it will increase your interest and you'll start learning more and more and more. Uh, make sure to hit that like button down below, by the way, especially if you want me doing more of these live streams, gotta make it worth my time. All, I, all I'm asking for is likes. Is that too much? Um, Bob Harvey says, BTC seems easier than gold to sell, convert. Yeah, it is easier to sell and convert only because, I mean, you can do it anywhere in the world. It's digital. Gold, it, you know, it's hard. It's heavy, hard to carry around, et cetera. Um, um, Bcash will still go up. Sure. And if your metric, the thing that you're optimizing for is to gain U.S. dollar value, then um, there's lots of options for you. Um, but if you're worried about preserving your wealth and keeping it out of the way where the governments can't seize it, steal it, um, inflate it, and so forth, um, then... You want to make sure you're choosing the right one. Um, S. Barnes, do I believe cash will be the king in the upcoming crash, or are you hedging into gold and Bitcoin largely now? Yeah, I'm hedging into gold and Bitcoin mostly now. Yeah. Um, for now, I am. Right now, we're still in an inflationary market. Prices, Asset prices are still going up, and so I'm staying in the commodities and the assets for them to go up. Lots of likes, people. That's right, PL Hunt. Um, XRP is supported by the WEF, says Torsten DR, which is another great reason to sell it because I don't want to support anything that's supported by the WEF, and I don't think you want to be on that side either. Um, Dippo, Dr. Hippo Squash, new to my channel. Very happy to study all your content. Thanks, Dr. Hippo. Appreciate that. I would love to meet you if you'd come to my live event. There's a link in the chat. It's just marketdisruptorslive.com, marketdisruptorslive.com. Come shake my hand, have a drink, ask me your questions personally. It'd be awesome. Uh, what's the next, next best thing after Bitcoin? Bitcoin. <laughs> Uh, sorry, these questions are going so fast here. Uh, what's the pick behind me? Um, I think it's just this boat. Like I said, I'm in this uh, rental office because I'm in Puerto Rico. My power's out, and um, I uh, I had to leave. <laughs> um, it's way too hot in Puerto Rico to be without power, and of course I couldn't do my videos and I couldn't do anything, so I had to come and rent an office in town that has a generator. And so I'm just in this office, and it's like a boat, I think, behind me. Sorry about that. Where and when are your events in uh, events in Florida? Percy Williams, you're asking. Percy, well, there's a link. Um, it's just marketdisruptorslive.com, and it's in Miami in November. Marketdisruptorslive.com in Miami in November. Um, Chet Baker says Bitcoin is a distraction from gold. Yeah, maybe it is. Um, and so again, back to your investor DNA, um, you know, choose whatever you think is best. Also, remember, you don't have to be all in 100% right. And so maybe you're 90% gold and 10% Bitcoin, or maybe you're 99% gold or 1% Bitcoin or whatever it may be, uh, but you don't have to be um, all 100% in and one or the other. Um, Percy Williams, and I'd love the info to attend, please. Um, yeah, it's, uh, well, I'll type it in the chat again. It's uh, marketdisruptorslive.com. Live.com. There you go. I just put it in. Thanks for all your work, Renato. Yes, yes. E.G. Jacobs. Uh, physical gold or Pax gold? Well, um, Pax gold, somebody else is holding it for you. So that introduces something called counterparty risk. Um, physical gold, you can hold it yourself. So that's a benefit. Um, John Doak, what are the measures of long-term preparedness you have taken now that you live in Puerto Rico? Um, hmm, well, I didn't get a generator, so that's a problem. <laughs> that's probably the first step I should do. I think I need to get a generator or some solar panels. 
Uh, Nicholas Pittenberg, anytime coming to California? Probably not this year. Probably be back in California sometime next year, but probably no live events. I probably won't be doing any live events in, in uh, there. Probably only be doing live events in Florida, Texas, or maybe down in Mexico. Looking into buying a home in El Salvador. Any info you have? Yeah, go to um, my friend uh, from Bitcoin Beach, uh, Ramon Martinez, is uh, selling real estate down there. So just go and look him up on Twitter or go to Bitcoin Beach and find out for him and they can find help you find some good real estate for you down there. Uh, extreme focus. How long before cash is removed from the economy? Well, I would say um, 36 months. Not something I've thought a lot about, but I just threw that number out there. Probably going to happen faster than we may think. Um, Silver Johnson, you still have real estate. I still have some real estate. I've sold most of my apartments. Um, I'm currently building a house in Mexico, and I'm also... Um, potentially getting a kind of a farm going down there as well, just, just to be ready. Renato says, follow me for at least a year and a half. Good content. Thanks, Renato. Appreciate that. Um, question, how does a desert rat not have a generator? All-nighter hider. What's up, buddy? Good to have you on here. Um, well, you know, that's a good question. And uh, I'm leasing a condo and... Um, I uh, I uh, didn't have a generator. I was so new on the island, I didn't bother to think about asking. And uh, now I don't want to spend the money for it. Um, will BlockFi's Bitcoin operation be shut down by the regulators? Uh, I don't think so, Joe Hillbilly. Um, I think, you know, what they're going after everybody. It's not just BlockFi. They're going after Celsius. They're going after everybody who's offering um, any type of yield on your Bitcoin because guess what? The government hates competition. So the government wants to pay you actually, no kidding, 0.01% interest on your on your money in the bank. 0.01. Some of these people, BlockFi, Celsius, et cetera, offer to pay you 4, 6, 8%. They don't like that because guess what? Remember I was just talking about the Mundo Fleming trilemma. They don't want you pulling money out of the bank. So they're coming after them um, because of that. Uh, Big Bulldog says, I'm a wealth of information. Thank you. And I have friends that are way smarter than me. I don't want to be the smartest guy in the room. So I'm bringing my 15 smartest friends to talk to you live at marketdisruptorslive.com. Come hang out, man. Have a drink. Uh, maybe I'll even buy you a drink. <laughs> If you say you watch this live stream and I said I'd buy you a drink, I'll buy you a drink. MarketDisruptorsLive.com. Ariana Dawson, all goes control the brokerage, Bitcoin version, AK Fiat. Sorry, I lost the question. Um, I am Andy says, go live more often. We need more informed leaders like yourself, giving the people a way to navigate. Thanks, Andy. Appreciate that. I probably will. All right. Well, um, I'm renting this space and I was actually supposed to be out 30 minutes ago. I thought they were going to knock on the door and tell me to leave. But um, since you guys have liked this so much, I guess I'll come back and go live more often. Of course, I need more likes. Give me some more likes on this. And uh, and uh, yeah, okay, buy me a drink, Mark. No, you have to say it to me in Miami. MarketDisruptorsLive.com. Come hang out with me and my friends. George Gammon's going to be there. Gerald Salente is going to be there. Robert Breedlove's going to be there. Brent... Um, Brent's going to be there. We've got Steven Van Meter's going to be there. Uh, Brent Johnson, Santiago Capital, the Milkshake Man. Uh, boy, I got. we're going to talk about asset protection, protecting your assets so you don't end up owning nothing in 2030. We're going to talk about Plan B Living, how to get passports, how to get citizenship in other countries really, really fast and cheap. We're going to talk about how to grow your wealth, build your wealth. Uh, we're going to talk about gold. We're going to talk about Bitcoin. We're going to talk about the state of the world, uh, political-wise, uh, financial markets-wise. We're going to talk about how to do sustainable farming, health. I mean, you name it, everything you need to navigate the Great Reset because I care about you guys. And I want to make sure that you build, grow, and protect your wealth. Most importantly, I don't want you to own nothing because I know you won't be happy with that because I ain't going to be happy with it. And most importantly, more importantly, let me just let me be real here for you a minute. You know, I've talked about this topic a lot, um, probably more than most channels. I don't know. I've done 15, 20 videos on, on that topic, different, different facets of this great reset. And, you know, it kind of came to me about eight, nine months ago of this whole concept of you'll own nothing and be happy. 
And, uh, you know, I don't know where you guys are at in your life, but I got kids and um, my kids, my kids are getting older. And uh, when you're a parent, you know, you start thinking about things a little bit differently. And I just thought, you know what, I'm not going to be happy if I own nothing. And more importantly, that's not a world that I'm happy for my kids to inherit or my grandkids to live in. And I just decided, am I focusing on all the bad stuff or am I actually doing anything about it? Am I focused on the world or building the world that I want? And the answer was I wasn't. I mean, sure, I was making content, I was educated, and I was trying to help as much as I could, but I wasn't actively building the world. I wasn't really engaged. And I decided about eight months ago, and you might have noticed in my content being a little bit different, but I decided, you know what? That is not a future that I want. And if there's anything I can do about it, then I'm going to make sure it does not come true. Not if there's anything I can do about it. And I would hope that each one of you would have that same purpose. Uh, as I like to say, right, I'm not trying to wake up the sleeping sheep. There's not a lot of hope for you. I know you're hearing what I'm saying and it's just going right over your head and you're like, yeah, this guy's crazy. I'm here to wake up the sleeping lions. I'm here to wake up you guys that are hearing this message right now. Because if that's not a future you want, like it's a future I don't want, if it's not a future you want your kids or your grandkids to have, then what are you going to do about it? Become educated, become motivated, and coordinate with other people, like-minded people that are actually trying to improve the world, to build the world they want, not passive. We're not passive. We're not victims here. We build the world that we want. That's why I'm having the event. I'm trying to wake up the sleeping lions. I'm trying to arm them. I'm trying to give them the information, I'm trying to motivate them. And if that sounds good, then hopefully you'll come join me. All right. With that, I'm going to hang it up. It's been good being with you guys. I appreciate all of you being here. we got a pretty good group tonight. Almost about 1,000 people watching concurrently. I haven't done lives in a long time, so I don't even know what to expect, but I guess that's pretty good. Make sure you're giving me likes on this because if I get enough likes, I'm going to keep doing these things for you. Maybe I might even do them like once a week. But don't hold me to that. I'm not promising just yet. But maybe if I get enough light, enough likes. There we go. Jacob says, I'm not here to wake up the sleeping sheep. I'm here to wake up the lions. You got it. That's right. Who's my lions out there? Put lion in the chat. Can I get a lion? Anybody who's a lion, just put a lion in the chat. I want to see how many we got. Either put lion or put roar. Can you do that for me? Why don't I do super chats? Maybe I should do super chats. Like I said, I haven't been going live. Um... No, I see amen, brother. I see thank you. I see true words. I like all that. I want to see lion or I want to see roar. Can I get that? Can I get that? Go Timcast IRL. Yeah, I've been watching Timcast IRL. Oh, by the way, one more thing while I got you guys here live. Uh, my first radio show goes live on iHeartRadio this weekend. So that's a pretty big deal. I'm going to be taking this to the masses, syndicated nationwide. I'm going to be waking up those lions all over the world. There we go. Roar, 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 roar. Finally, finally. That's what I want to see. I'm trying to call out to you, the people who want to make this world better, the people who are not victims, right? This government used to be we the people, for the people, by the people. And I just ask you this question. I ask myself this question all the time. I ask my friends this question. So I'm going to ask you this question. If not us, then who? Who's going to do it? And if not right now, then when? I mean, think about it. We're literally this close to losing it. You know that by the time they force you to show this thing, to get inside everywhere you go. I'm not going to say the words. You know what I'm talking about. By the time they force you to show this, to gain access, what they call freedom pass, it's over. They don't go backwards from there. If we don't hold the line right here, history shows it's not going to be good. So if not you, if not me, who? So wake up the lions, man. Let's get this thing going. Come join me at themarketdisruptorslive.com. And, uh, Meet about 15 of my best friends who are paying attention to this stuff every day. Meet like-minded people. And uh, let's do this thing. All right? With that, I'm going to sign it off. Like I always say, to your success, I'm out.